Disclaimer, this video contains excessive profane language. If you have children in the room, or if you're easily offended by such language, please refrain from watching the video. I don't want you to subject yourself to tireless typing to explain to me why you don't like my speech. Have a good day. Happy Monday to all you wonderful and amazing people. I hope that you had an awesome weekend. I know that we are still on vacation, okay, girl? We are still, or we at least we still feel like we are on vacation. Ever since that three-day weekend we had for the 4th of July, girl, I don't know about y'all, but it's just, it's hard for me to actually do some work right now because I literally tried to take a little bit of time out, but it is what it is. You got to get back on your ground. But we're going to be revisiting the Wendy Williams saga, and I do have a lot of stories that I'm going to be talking about today. I am going to leave the positive ones um, to the end of the video. That way, we can leave this video on a positive note. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Basically, Wendy Williams went back on her show, and she decided to backtrack her statements. Remember, she said that she would be offended if she was a white person if there were historically white colleges and universities. And as I said in my previous video, that maybe Wendy Williams is not aware of this, but any college that is not a historically black college that was, you know, founded back in the day was technically a historically white college, even though that is not the specific name of the college, because back then these colleges were basically just for white people because they did not allow African Americans to um, be admitted to those schools. But she said that that's not what she meant. She was basically saying, so, and, and if you go back and you watch her statement, and I'll try to find the video on YouTube, and I'll try to leave it down in the description box. The things that she was saying to backtrack, she was talking all over herself, and the things that she was saying to backtrack absolutely made no sense whatsoever. She went into the whole tyrant about her father and her brother going to historical black colleges. She also said that she was basically hinting at if it was um, made a requirement to be a part of the admissions process, whether or not you had to be black or white. But like I said, Wendy Williams seems to be very, 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 very ignorant to the admissions process of any of these colleges because clearly it does not say you have to be a white person to go to this college and definitely to a historically black college. It does not say that you have to be an African-American to attend this college. Again, Wendy, it has nothing to do with historically black college had nothing to do with excluding white people because they offered um, a lot of poor white people went to historically black colleges because they could not afford to go to um, the big named uh, universities because it was way out of their price range. But historically black colleges had a lot of fundings, a lot of grants and a lot of resources for a lot of poorer people to be able to afford to go to school. This is a fact, girl. Get your facts straight, Wendy. But because of Wendy's idiotic comments, she ended up, or at least this is a rumor. This has not been a proven fact. I've seen it on a lot of blogs that I do follow. But like I said, some of these blogs, and I'm going to speak about this in a little while, but a lot of these blogs that we follow, they report so much false information. And that's why I try to tell people to be aware of the news source that you're sharing. Also be aware of the dates because a lot of people have been sharing a lot of things on Facebook recently that were stories that were over a year old. They were from a lot of these um, satire sites, people who cannot be trusted, people who like to um, basically just get a lot of clicks and reshares and likes, okay? You have a lot of people sharing fake news stories just to get clicks and likes, period, point blank, exclamation point. But allegedly, Wendy Williams has lost her endorsement uh, that was provided to her by Chevrolet. She has several others, you know, on the Wendy show, but apparently the Chevrolet basically pulled their endorsement because of her um, stupid, idiotic ass comments. And there was someone, I forgot your name, young lady, I'm not trying to bash you for leaving your opinion or anything on my page, but she was saying how uh, she don't think anybody should lose their job because of their opinion. And I totally agree with you. However, if I, just say Thick Chick Vlogs, if I am endorsing you, for example, and you say some most stupid off the wall ass shit towards black people, I have every right to stop paying you to be the face of me. If I am all about my brothers and my sisters and you say some idiotic ass shit to offend a certain group of people, I have every right to remove my endorsement, um, and remove you as being the face of my company. I have every right. Wendy Williams is still Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams still has her television show. She hasn't lost her job. She simply lost her endorsement, period. And like I told you on my uh, page, like I said, whether or not you agree with it or disagree with it, 
at the end of the day, it's business and you have to be um, cautious of the things that you say, especially when you are a public figure. We can all go back to the whole Tamar Braxton situation. A lot of times you have advertisers who will not, okay, work with you if you are one of those people who uh, uh, is uh, offends people. If you're a person who says a lot of off the wall shit, they just will not endorse you. It is a proven fact. Like I said, whether or not we agree with it or not, you have people who have that right to um, allow who they want to allow to be the face of their company. But again, I want to reference that all of this is alleged. It is not a proven fact that Wendy lost her endorsement with Chevrolet, but that is what the blogs are reporting. I also want to say, Wendy, you had some nerve. I low-key caught when you said um, you are a we are the world, we are the people kind of person, you know, which basically saying that, you know, you are... You don't really see color. And I totally understand where you're coming from when you said that you're gonna, you don't see color. But that had, abs that had absolutely nothing to do with the stupid comments that you said about the historically black colleges and universities. You were insinuating that we were basically trying to exclude white people from what we were trying to do. When all, in actuality, all we were trying to do was receive the same rights and the same education as white people were receiving. So, like I said, I know you were trying to backtrack, but you really, you stumbled all over yourself. But again, if I can find that clip, I'll leave it down in the description box for you guys to check it out. In this next what the fuck fucking story, there is a police officer on Facebook by the name of Rodney Lee, okay? There was a young lady who posted a picture. Her name is uh, Leandria Williams. She lives in Dallas, Texas. She posted a photograph of her five-year-old daughter, okay? She posted a photograph of her five-year-old daughter, and I guess people were sharing the picture. So whoever this Rodney Lee guy is, and like I said, he, he was, he is a former police officer. People were sharing the photo, and this person actually commented underneath her photograph saying, we'll see how much her life matters soon. Better be careful leaving her, leaving your info open where she can be found. He put a smiley face. Hold her close tonight. It'll be the last time. Now, mind you, this is a picture of a five-year-old little girl, okay? He said, we'll see how much her life matters soon. Better be careful leaving your info open where she can be found. Hold her close tonight. It'll be the last time. Now, the Overland Park Police Department has fired this dude, like I said, following an investigation. So apparently this was, in fact, him that left these comments. I know a lot of times people will say that it was a fake site or I'm, I'm a fake profile or whatever. It was a troll. But this person seemingly was the actual police officer that left these comments, which led to him being fired, okay? It says um, she was horrified, of course, when this person left these comments on her profile, so she clicked on it, and she saw that he was, in fact, a police officer. So she filed a report, they did the investigation, and they found out, apparently, that it was him that left these nasty comments underneath the, the picture of a five-year-old black girl disgusting okay absolutely disgusting and i can't even begin to understand how somebody can even do that okay a police officer even if you have certain re reservations about african-american people the fact that you left these nasty comments underneath the photograph of a five-year-old little girl is absolutely disturbing to me and then what's even more disturbing is that you're a police officer hold your child Hold her close tonight. It'll be the last time. Wow. Now, since we're talking about Dallas right now, let's speak on the um, the the man who killed the five police officers down there in Dallas and wounded, I think it was seven other police officers. Absolutely disgusting crime. I want to say that first and foremost. And there are a lot of people out there, conspiracy theories, who have a lot of theories calling the Dallas shooting a hoax. They feel like it was the government who... Um, had the police officers killed because they were trying to divert our attention from um, Alton Sterling and Philandro Castile, who were uh, murdered by the police officers in the in the days prior to this. And you also ha have people who are who are thinking that they want to put shine a negative light on the Black Lives Matter movement because this was a peaceful. Okay, I do want to note that this was a peaceful Black Lives Matter. Um, protest that was happening in downtown Dallas and they said that the protesters as well as the uh, Dallas police officers they were um, interacting with each other they even said that the Dallas police officers didn't even have on their tactical tactical gear because they didn't want the peaceful protesters to feel like they were um 
being aggressive, okay? And this guy, Micaiah Xavier, now, at first they said that it was three three shooters, and then they said it was two, but I guess, like I said, at the time, I guess they were investigating the thing, because all of this stuff was happening so fast. But Micah Xavier Johnson is apparently the alleged gunman who is right now deceased. He was 25 years old. They said he was a former soldier, and he told police that he was not affiliated with any groups and he was acting by himself. So he told them that he was not affiliated with Black Lives Matter. He wasn't affiliated with any other groups. He was doing what he was doing on his own because apparently the police officers and uh, Micah actually had a 45 minute conversation before Micah was killed by uh, police with a one of those uh, bomb robots. You know how sometimes they send one of those bomb robots in to detonate a bomb? They actually sent a, a bomb in on the robot to actually be detonated to kill Micah Xavier. Like I said, he was 25 years old, okay? He said, um, they, they apparently said that he had connections to uh, black hate groups on Facebook. And they also said that he was a loner who had bomb making materials, ballistic vests, rifles, and ammo. I mean, this dude had a whole gang of shit, okay? I actually saw a video that somebody was shooting. Um, They said they were in a basement or something. And they actually got um, footage of Micah killing one of the police officers apparently when they were having the uh the hot the the um negotiations there was a police officer who thought he was he was he would be able to um catch michael off guard and kill him or take him down or whatever they were planning on doing but unfortunately michael saw him and he ran ran up on him and he literally executed the police officer it was, it was it was some graphic ass shit and i'm glad that now facebook actually has it to where a lot of these videos are automatically censored because you know um with the new updates and things when you scroll on facebook if it's a video especially a video that you do not want to see a lot of these videos audio uh, automatically play so even if you don't plan on clicking on it it'll it will automatically play when you're scrolling down your news feed so i'm, I'm glad that they have a lot of these um video sensor to where you actually have to click on them in order to watch them, especially the graphic videos. But it was extremely graphic. And like I said, he was apparently barricaded in a parking garage. They, they again, they gave him the option to come out of the parking garage, surrender, surrender his weapons, et cetera, et cetera. But he um, refused to do so. And that's when they sent in the bomb and killed uh, this dude. Because like I said, it was, I mean, now that, I, and then my thing is this, how in the hell, I will say this, how in the hell will you mourn the death? And matter of fact, this quote was going around on Facebook as well. How in the hell can you mourn the death of Elton Sterling and Philandro Castile and you sit there and celebrate the death of police officers? Okay, that is absolutely ridiculous. I don't care what your feelings are about police officers. I don't give a damn, okay? I don't give, 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 even give a damn if you're racist. How in the hell can you mourn the death of one group of people and then turn around and celebrate because this crazy ass dude killed these police officers. I mean, that is absolutely, that's, I mean, you literally, like Eric Benet said, that is literally the thing that you just said that you hated, that you just turned into if you sit there and celebrate some shit like that. So like I said, rest in peace to the police officers that were killed. I really honestly and truly hope that family, it, it has to be some type of um, re resolve to this because we can't go back and forth like this. We can't go back and forth with police officers gunning down unarmed black men or black men who clearly aren't a threat to them. And you definitely can't have uh, civilians going around here killing police officers because of the 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 how basically how they feel. Okay, because you got um, a couple of bad apples. You're gonna go out here and you're gonna kill innocent police officers who possibly. Um, were good cops themselves. I mean, I think it's a very, very sad situation, and it's 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 praying. It's been praying time, but it's really praying time now because people, like I said, emotions are high, and people are they're getting desperate. So prayers to all of those who lost their lives in Dallas, and just pray for the entire community, and continue to pray for Alton Sterling and Philandro Castile and any other person who was unjustly killed by a police officer, continue to pray for them as well because we do not need to take our eyes off of um, the reason why they, those people were out there protesting in the beginning. And I know the, the media will try to, to um, basically divert our attention to something else which I'm not saying that they shouldn't put the attention on the police officers as well, but I think just as much attention needs to be focused on the unjust that happened to those men as well as on the police officers.
Nakia Jones, if you guys are not on social media, you probably would not have seen the video um, by Nakia Jones. Nakia Jones is an African-American police officer. She basically spoke out about a lot, of, a lot of the things that were going on recently, as well as a lot of um, unprofessionalism and a lot of racism that does go on in um, the police force. And she also, I mean, she had a lot of things to say, and I think that her video was very, very informative, but I think it was, it, it was great that she was brave enough to speak out. Now, there were several news sources, several blogs that were reporting that Nakia was fired because of her um, basically speaking out against the police brutality that was going on in America. Now, Nakia decided that she needed to make a Facebook page to basically clear her name and, and well, basically clear her department because, like I said, you have people who were literally calling up their cursing those people out, saying that they were going to be protesting outside of their building, all of these things. And Nakia actually had to create this page to let people know that I was not suspended nor fired. And I do want to say that uh, 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 <clears throat> Kissy Denise, I do follow Kissy Denise. I also follow Love B. Scott. There are a lot of these people that I do follow, and I do try to go to the African-American bloggers first. I will say that I, that I do try to go to the African-American bloggers first, but we need to be very, very careful at the shit that we share, okay? Um, and we may, need to make sure that we do extensive research before we go writing shit on our fucking blog and not knowing what the fuck we're talking about, okay? So Kissy and the people who work for B. Scott or whoever the fuck works, works for Kissy Denise as well, y'all need to make sure y'all do a little bit more research before you go just sharing shit which, like I said, over the last couple of days, that's one of the main reasons why I really haven't clicked on y'all shit unless I've seen it somewhere else first, is because you are reporting false information and you are inciting a lot of anger in people when it shouldn't be there. So Nakia basically came, like I said, she recreated a Facebook page to let everybody know that she was not fired, she was not suspended, she didn't break any rules, and everything is good. Even her police chief came out and said she didn't break any rules, she's not fired, she's still on the force, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are also people who are going around um, posting GoFundMe links, basically saying they're raising money for Nakia to get a lawyer, they're raising money for her to be able to support her family while she's on this suspension, when, like I said, she also said that she she is not affiliated with any of these GoFundMe links. So please do not be donating any money to these GoFundMe links as well. Because these are people who are literally just trying to get your money and uh, scams. Okay, just scam, 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 scam. It's like I said, people, please use your mind. Please do a little bit of research before you just go sharing shit. And please make sure you check dates and sources. Because a lot of these sources or satire okay you can clearly look at the the title of a blog and tell if it's satire there's one um on facebook i think it's called i love to laugh or some shit like that and they are sharing all of this hateful thing all of these hateful things basically all of it is lies okay all of it is lies and they're trying to get clicks and shares and it's trying to make people upset when everything that they're posting on their blog is is total totally fabricated so just make sure you're aware of what you're sharing nakia jones has not been fired she's still on the force and she does not have any gofundme uh campaign set up to uh raise money for any lawyers or uh to help her doing her suspension because she's not suspended now let's talk about former united states representative joe walsh for a second you may not have known this, like I said, again, if you haven't been on social media, but Joe Walsh decided that he wanted to say a lot of, um, basically, these were ter ter terroristic threats. I don't care what you say. If this had have been anybody else, they would have been investigated by the Secret Service. They would have got some type of visit. They probably would have been brought down to the police station. Joe Walsh decided that he wanted to write on his Facebook page, and I do quote, Three Dallas cops killed, seven wounded. This is now war. Watch out, Obama. Watch out, Black Lives Matter punks. Real America is coming after you. I mean, this is clearly, you can tell, I mean, you can put this in layman's terms. You can kind of look at this as being a terroristic threat. Now, if you or I would have just wrote something to the same effect on social media, 
And it would have gotten a whole lot, all these shares and re retweets like Joe Walsh's comments did. I can guarantee you that the Secret Service or someone who is affiliated with the government would have been paying your ass a fucking visit, okay? And of course, apparently Twitter removed Joe Walsh's page. I'm not sure how, how accurate that is. I think it's back up now. But he actually did a... An interview with Don Lemon. Y'all know I have my reservation with Don Lemon. Sometimes he be out here cooning and shit. And sometimes he be talking uh, like he all for the black man. Okay. But Joe Walsh got on there. He basically said he doesn't take back anything that he said. He basically meant exactly what he said. But he also said that he was not saying it in a way that he wanted somebody to hurt President Barack Obama. And he did not want people to go and leave any type of um, hateful comments on Barack Obama's Facebook page, nor did he want them to send Barack Obama hateful tweets. He said that if we go back to when Ferguson happened with the whole Mike Brown situation, he said that Obama, and we already know that no matter what happens in America, okay, you can have a Bluebell ice cream truck that can overturn. People go and steal all the Bluebell ice cream off the truck. If it wasn't for Barack Obama, those people wouldn't be out there taking all the Bluebell ice cream that fell off the back of this truck. Everything that happens is Barack Obama's fault. I have never seen a president in the history that since I've been been living and been able to be aware that we had a president, okay, since I've been old enough to know what the hell a president was, I have never seen somebody blame a president for every single thing that happened. My vacuum cleaner broke. If it wasn't for Barack Obama, I'd be able to afford me another vacuum cleaner. Everything that happens is Barack Obama's fault. So he said that back, back when Ferguson happened, he said Barack Obama constantly accuses police officers of being racist and saying that they are corrupt. Now, I don't know about you, okay? But what I recall President Barack Obama saying is that there is a lot of um, systematic racism that is happening. Yes, there is a lot of police uh, departments that need to be reformed, that needs, they need to be reformed. It does. Now, even Don Lemon said, I need you to give me one instance where President Barack Obama accused cops of being racist. Now, of course, Joe Walsh goes to backtracking his statement saying that, well, if you go back here, he said three times that the police departments are corrupt. And, I mean, he, he didn't give not one exact statement where President Barack Obama accused the police, any police department of being racist, okay? Never did that man accuse a police department of being racist. So, Joe Walsh, you're full of fucking shit. And like I said, I feel some type of way at the fact that they, are, they aren't investigating your motherfucking ass. You just basically put out a terroristic threat. I don't give a fuck about you being a former United States uh, representative. You are full of shit. And you need to have your funk ass investigated just like everybody else. They need to come and get your ass, put you in handcuffs and treat you like you a fucking criminal. Just like anybody else who leaves terroristic threats on the internet in direct correlation and directed towards the president. And then, of course, you're talking about watch out Black Lives Matter punks like you're going to do something to the people who were uh, who are affiliated with Black Lives Matter. And I need you to understand that Black Lives Matter had absolutely nothing to do with the death of those police officers down there in Dallas. The Black Lives Matter protest, those people were peaceful. Even the police officers that were down there said that this was a peaceful protest. They were actually interacting with the protesters. Not once did anybody get out of hand. This dude even told the police officers himself that he acted alone. He is not affiliated with any groups. He is not affiliated with Black Lives Matter. So you right there, you need to pump your motherfucking brakes. And again, I think that they need to um, investigate your ass just like they would have done any other normal person who put this type of cryptic message on social media. I ain't saying, I'm just motherfucking saying. Rudy Giuliani, I'm basically just going to tell y'all what Rudy Giuliani said. And we already know that Rudy Giuliani has been fucking racist back when he was the goddamn uh, mayor of um, New York back in 1980, whatever the fuck, 1920, however the fuck all he is. Like I said, this dude got one foot on a banana peel and the other foot in the grave, and he's still bigger than a motherfucker. Basically, he said that black parents, they need to teach their black children to fear other black children, not police officers. So if you're a black parent out there, you don't need to teach your children to fear the police. You need to teach your children to fear other black children. He also said, you've got to teach your children that the real danger to them is not the police. The real danger to them 
99 out of 100 times are other black kids who are going to kill them. That's the way they are going to die. So Rudy Giuliani basically just said that you need to teach your children to fear other black children and you need to tell them that 99 out of 100% of the time they're going to be killed by their friends, basically. Comment. Let's get on to some more positive news because I'm at a point right now where I am emotionally drained from all of this that's going on. We cannot take our sights off of it, but it's just like I am emotionally drained from the whole thing. So I want you guys to look out for some funny videos from me over the next couple of days because I just need to, um, I need to laugh, okay? Because like I said, I'm emotionally drained from all of the things that are going on in America right now. But on some more positive news, like I said, Beyonce paid tribute to the fallen police officers down there in Dallas during one of her um, concerts. She said, rest in peace to the officers who, whose lives were sens senselessly taken yesterday in Dallas. I am praying for a full recovery of the seven others injured. No violence will create peace. Every human life is valuable. We must be the solution. Every human being has the right to gather in peaceful protest without suffering more unnecessary violence. To effect change, we must show love in the face of hate and peace in the face of violence. And she also did a, a tribute to them, like I said, during her concert where she sung something. I'm not exactly sure of the, the name of the song right now. I actually listened to it, but I can't think right off the top of my head. If you don't know, over the last couple of um, months ever since formation has came out, a lot of police officers have been boycotting a lot of Beyonce's events saying that they will not be, um, providing security for Beyonce during her events because they felt like formation was a video that was anti-police. Basically, it was spit in the police officer's face when she has several times, um, basically said that that statement was false. She is, her video was not about being anti-police. And I think this is, uh, proof that Beyonce is not anti-police if she was she in no way shape nor form nor fashion would have been offering her, her condolences to the Dallas police officers if she was someone who is just um, a hater of police officers more positive news Shaka Khan has entered into a rehabilitation facility on her own she was not forced to do so she apparently is dependent on prescription pain medication and she wanted to get herself healthy before things get out of control there are a lot of people out here that are dying from uh overdosing on prescription pain medication a lot of people really sleep on the fact that uh, prescription drugs are out here killing people more often than a lot of these other drugs because now you got a lot of people who um have easy access to these prescription drugs they're still in their family members uh, medication you also have a lot of crooked doctors out here who will literally uh, prescribe people excessive amounts of prescription pain medication and these people become dependent on that so shout out to Shaka Khan for deciding that she wants to get herself help before things get to the point where um, it's, 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 it's dangerous so shout out to Shaka Khan for that Serena Williams wins Wimbledon for the historic 22nd Grand Slam title Girl, you the bomb, boo. You the bomb. My mama was literally looking at some tennis the other day. And when I say I'm going to tell you the truth, I don't watch tennis. I'm going to be I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Unless Serena Williams is on the screen. So shout out to you, Serena. Keep rising to the top, boo. And that is all that I have for you guys today, family. If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you enjoy my videos, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.